Hello everyone. Today we're ready for our fourth exercise in our nine exercise progression for fixing your chest cave. So we've talked already about restoring mobility. We did a rock back. We did uh, the second exercise that we did. What did we do? Oh, a glute bridge. We turned the hamstrings on, right? Because we need a little bit of control of the hips. And we turn the glutes on a little bit because we need those anti-gravity muscles. We need something that we can sit into when we squat so that our back doesn't have to be so tight and we can rely on our hips for stability and for demonstrating strength. Then we did a rocking motion to try to keep those positions, but under a little bit more load and a little bit more dynamic movement where we're rocking back and forth. Now, exercise number four. I knew I'd forget. I get on the camera and I just get so nervous. Exercise number four is the backwards bear crawl. So. This one's nice because we're starting to get, even though we move one leg at a time and one arm at a time, one side at a time, you might say, we're getting more of a squatting pattern now. And you'll see like when I, when I do a squat, I'm here, okay? My knees are up above my hip level or towards my hip level at least. And when I do a bear crawl, it's the same idea. You see how my knee is up just like this? It looks just like a squat. So that's cool. So that's one of the ideas here. There's a lot going on. I like going backward only, not forward, because when I go forward, it teaches me or it encourages my crunch. Whereas if I go backward, it discourages my crunch. And so if we're fixing a chest cave, I don't want to encourage the chest cave. I want to teach you how to, I want to put you in a position that shows you how to not do it. Okay. So we're going to set up just like the first one we did, just like that rock back. We're gonna tuck your hips, feel your outer lower abs, got a nice round back position. I'm gonna push myself away from the ground and I'm not even gonna pick my knees up off the ground yet because I find that difficult sometimes. So my upper back is pretty stiff. Let's keep my knees down. We're gonna take a step with a knee and an opposite hand, keep my abs, I still got them, keep my push, now I got that, okay. We're gonna keep breathing. I'm gonna call that our second step. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Halfway. Now I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna try to make it hard now. So tuck the hips, got my abs. We're gonna pick our knees up. We're gonna push away first. Pick our knees up off the ground and continue. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Cool. So I still feel pretty good ab here. Um, if you wanna make it a little more challenging, you can take bigger steps. So tuck, reach. Bigger step. Okay, now it looks like I'm squatting deeper with this knee here, but I gotta make sure I'm pushing away. Gotta make sure my hand stays flat as I push away. Do it again. This one I find hard to do. There we go, I got it. That might be what it looks like. Um, one thing you, you might notice, and I do very often, kinda did there as well, tuck step. As I do this, I try to look down and that's how I know I'm crunching. <laughs> so look up a little bit above your hand. Be proud <laughs> of your posture. Something like that. Okay. And just that, that intent of looking straight up helps, you know, just straighten out the rest of the body. It undoes that crunch that you're seeing. So. Exercise number four, the backwards bear crawl. We did our rocking, we did our glute bridge, we did our, well, we did our rock back, and then we did our glute bridge, then we did our rocking, and now we did our backwards bear crawl. That's number four in our nine exercise progression for fixing your chest cave. Let me know how it goes. Make sure you're paying attention to what that chest is doing. Make sure you're looking up. Make sure you're pushing yourself away. Whatever it is, you don't have to think about all of these. Oftentimes, 
all I'm trying to do, it's like I want all of these things, right? But what I do is I set you up there and then I say, okay, hold that. First time you try this, keep your knees on the ground. It's too much to think about to be overloading yourself with your knees off the ground. So keep your knees on the ground, keep the push, and just reset each step. So we take a step, we got, okay, tuck the hips, push yourself away, and look up, okay? And then I'm gonna step back, tuck the hips, still got them, push yourself away, still looking up, take a step back, same thing. Hips, push, and back, push, and back, okay? And it'll start to become more automatic. And after you get that set up more automatic, you'll just be able to say, good, hold that, then do the exercise, okay? That's the stepwise way of learning all of these different cues that I'm throwing at you, right? I don't want you to try to expect yourself to do it perfectly right away, but I wanna give you all the tools that you need so that you do it correctly, okay? So set yourself up for success, uh, go stepwise, get the setup correct, and then just go slowly from there.